Welcome everyone to the Empower Hour. I am your host Hanifa and I am Al Kumar. And we are your hosts each and every Thursday at 6 p.m. where we come here every week, once a week, um, to discuss various topics, taboo topics that affect our uh, community. Today is no different. We have um, a guest that's actually returning, mm -hmm. the Minister of Wellness himself. You guys may have um, heard of him. You may have seen him on YouTube. Um, he's usually all over the internet. You probably may have even seen him on our show. But um, today we will be discussing health and wellness. What more appropriate time than now? Most of us are getting ready um, or recharging changing our diets we have new year resolutions so we figure why what, what's more appropriate than now january the beginning of the year so we wanted to bring the minister of wellness on because he did such an awesome job the last time and he is loaded with information and facts and also resources so we welcome you minister of wellness can you hear us yes i can hear you all can you all hear me yes great great, great. how are you good. And, and I'm doing before, good. Before we get started, we just want to let our audience know if you, the, um, the Minister of Wellness is up on our screen here, and you can also see him yourself if you join on eLife Media Group on Facebook right now. We're streaming live there at eLife Media Group. That's the Facebook page, and you can see the entire program very clear and concise right there at that, um, at that link. Good. Thank you so much, Minister, for joining us once again. <laughs> and we know your schedule is so, so busy these days. I've been, I'll be following you religiously. <laughs> and uh, I see that you are traveling. You are traveling. Yeah. And actually, you look like you're in a hotel room now. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yes, I'm, I'm down here in Orlando, Florida, so anyone who's in Florida, close to Orlando, come on down. I uh, flew in today, had a safe trip, and uh, we have, this is my last event in January. Um, we'll be, I'll be speaking Saturday, 12 p.m. to 3 p.m., and I need to get the, um, I need to get the exact uh, address. It's at a large, a very large uh, church in, in Orlando. And food will be included. Living my best health—that's the name of the event. Of course, is listed on my uh, page, the Minister of Wellness. And if you go to Eventbrite, living my best health. Uh, but that's where I'm at currently in Orlando, uh, Florida. The week before then, I was in Mobile, Alabama. Before that, I was in Houston, Texas. Then uh, my event, January 4th, we had people that came from Philadelphia. Los Angeles, Detroit, Dallas, all over the nation. They, uh, we had attendees that attended my January 4th event in St. Louis. So uh, this month has truly been a blessing, and, and this is just the beginning. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, we're so grateful that you had time for little old us still. <laughs> While, <you're, laughs> While you blowing up into the into the big time over there. So yeah, and it's well deserved. Not another person on earth is more deserving to be listened to in the in the subject matter of health and wellness than you. I really think so. You got a pulse a, 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 a pulse beat on really what's going on and solutions. You know, we hear about all the issues as it relates to our health, but you come in with the solutions. So that's what we want to talk a little bit about today. Yeah. Um, so tell us um, what has changed? What's been going on since the last time we saw you? What's been happening? What has been, give, give us some testimonies <laughs> that you've, that you want to share with the audience is the last time you were on the program. <laughs> yeah, yes, it's uh, 2019 was an amazing year when at my event, my event January 4th, it was absolutely incredible to see people attend the event whom my videos propelled them to lose so much weight that they showed up to the event smaller than me. Wow. And that really, Rare. That really motivated me. One brother, Nate Duncan, uh, March 2019, he was 275 pounds. He saw binge watching my videos on YouTube. And because I'm so detailed and I have so much 
uh, free information out there for people to follow. He showed up. So March, March, he was 275, and he showed up to the event nine pounds smaller than me, 185 pounds, January 4th. Wow, Lean, less than a year. Yes, yes, and I had a brother, uh, Robert, same thing. He, uh, in 2019, he came across me, uh, 200, he was 285 pounds, and saw my video when I was trying to scold, um, uh, scold our people for eating uh, what I call boo-boo chicken. And he, and he said at first it completely <laughs> turned off because he was like, well, I ain't gave up pork, I ain't gave up all the bottom feeders and so forth, but now you're trying to tell me that I can't even eat chicken. But he kept on watching the message because if anybody listens to me, uh, my, my, my passion, my passion comes from a state of love. Uh, open rebuke is better than secret love. You don't just sit back and watch somebody destroy themselves. You, know, you, you, you have to tell people the truth, especially when it comes to their health. Well, uh, 285, and he showed up January 4th, 180. Mm. So he lost 100. And five pounds. Uh, I have a brother currently. I got. I have to check on brother Demetrius, but uh, he had, as of a couple months ago, he had lost two hundred pounds in eight months. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He had gone from four seventy to two sixty. And as a matter of fact, he appeared on the Carl Nelson show last time I was on, and I believe that was December the third. Radio show and the and the list goes on and on. Uh, people yeah. reversing people reversing high blood pressure. So it's truly a blessing. And and one of the things that I had someone I, I had several people. Did, and, and one of the three reasons why it's important to have these many success stories. And this is just a few. I could we could dedicate the whole hour to actually diving deep into the stories behind these people and more. Uh, but it's very important because there is unfortunately a rising mentality among uh, our people that uh, that we can't be healthy because of uh, the stresses of battling racism. And and I've had people send me articles and want me to do videos on how racism causes overeating, and I refuse to do it because I, I me personally, it's a bunch of nonsense. Uh, no. You're, I, I refuse. No one is going to sit there and convince me that the reason why I'm not in top shape is because some outside force is making me put something in my mouth. Mm -hmm. I'm not in top shape because of the decisions that I make, mm -hmm. and I want everyone to have that mentality. Mm -hmm. That is absolutely dangerous to believe mm -hmm. that there is a system uh, that can make you eat yourself to death and feed your children dope food. Absolutely not. We we get the knowledge, and once we get the knowledge, each of us as individuals, we're responsible for doing uh, the, the best that we can. And my success stories that God has blessed me to have. Oh, yeah, I had a brother that reversed autoimmune disease. He had, um, what's the name of that autoimmune disease? He had bumps all over his body. I believe it was psoriasis. Yes, yes. He from New York City, mm -hmm. and he reversed psoriasis. And this is all; these are all black people. I had a sister that reached out to me in the emergency room, and she said the doctors wanted to rip her gallbladder out, and I told her she didn't have to do that. Mm -hmm. Okay, and she ended up reversing gallbladder disease. I have a sister that's reversed breast cancer, mm -hmm. so I don't want to hear this nonsense about uh, there's some force to work out there that can that can cause us to be. You know, we that can cause us to be unhealthy. I just I refuse to accept that, and I don't want anybody that listens to me to accept it. We will uh, be victorious. We will have the victory. We will win, and we will overcome any situation uh, that's thrown at us. We will. Absolutely, right, and thank you for saying that. And, and that is so important. I'm glad you touched on that. Blaming, blaming the outside world for our own <laughs> personal shortcomings and right. misdeeds. And even you said once we get the now the knowledge, it's up it's our responsibility to um, live it. You know, live that information, and not just that. It's our responsibility, those of us who do have the knowledge, to share it with those who don't. 
you know, and I think, you know, we, we, uh, we should be in a better place when we all get that type of understanding yes. instead of hoarding information and thinking that, you know, I got, I got it, you know, you get it however way you deem fit. That's what I, one of the things I admire so much about you, Minister, is that you're willing to share. You're willing to share with, with whomever, you know, and, uh, and I think that's, you know, goes to your success these days. Is because you are so open and generous with the knowledge that you have about these issues. Um, right, well, I, I'm sorry. No, I just wanted to jump into some of the things, you know, here lately, um, um, probiotics has taken like a big front and center place in the health world. Um, more and more people are talking about it and using it. I myself use probiotics um, for for gut health. Can you talk to us a little bit about pro probiotics and the benefits or lack thereof of the? It's product? very, it's very important. Probiotics are very important. Actually, there's twelve components of food addiction. <coughs> Excuse me. There's twelve components of food addiction. Uh, and that's the basis of the lectures that I've been doing as I've been traveling the nation because if you don't understand food addiction, you're going to fall off. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to reach a state of hopelessness. And that's when, once you reach a state of hopelessness, that's when you just completely give up. And we don't want people to get to that point. So the eighth component of food addiction is called bad bacteria, B-A-D bacteria. And that comes from eating a junk food diet. Uh, we are what we eat. It doesn't matter what our brains tell us, uh, and that's my brain included. We can sit here and believe in moderation and a little bit won't hurt all we want to, but that's not reality. The reality <laughs> is is that what we eat it either poisons us or is giving us the strength and the medicine we need to live long, healthy lives. Most of us are choosing not to do that. We're choosing to eat to die. Mm. And when you choose that, when you put poison into your system, one of the things that it, that, that it does is it compromises a healthy gut. Uh, that's called the gut microbiome, healthy gut flora. Uh, and 70% of our immune system in it is in our gut, so it's very important. And, and the gut is linked, gut health is linked to overall body health. Gut, gut health is health. Uh, so if you don't have a healthy gut, and you're eating junk foods, and these junk foods build bad bacteria such as Candida albicans that can fuel all of these diseases we're suffering from, and it can fuel cravings, which is the second powerful component of food addiction. So yes, we want to, uh, but we want to, we want to eat foods that support the, the growth of healthy bacteria, which is called probiotic. And the best way to do that is through diet, of course. Uh, now, for people who have autoimmune disease, cancer, yes, they do have supplements out there, but uh, whenever man starts making stuff, you had better be careful of what pro, uh, prebiotics that you take. Uh, you first want to always clean the diet up first because there's no pill or potion or lotion that's going to overpower eating a nutrient-dense plant-rich diet. And the worst thing that you could, uh, and, and of course, uh, it, it can't overpower the biological cause of, in effect of uh, of not eating to live, meaning you can't take a prebiotic pill and that's going to overpower a cheeseburger as a cake and ice cream, you know, or you can uh, take a prebiotic and that means that uh, it, it can make up for not eating, uh, you know, greens and beans and onions and mushrooms and berries and seeds. But I do sell prebiotics. I sell a, a supplement for the gut. Uh, to help to help expedite uh, to supplement, but all we have, we have to keep in mind is supplement is just what it is. We want to we keep wanting to make it more than what it is because we're lazy. That's the ninth component of food addiction: energy conservation. We're a pill for every ill type of society, and even the great doctor uh, Laila Africa, he knows more, uh, uh, much more about herbs for this, 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 this than I do. But he always say, you know, you can't sprinkle some herbs on a, uh, on a, on, on McDoodoo and expect it to make you healthy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you, 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 um, since we're on the gut, before we move on from that, um, I know that I've read, I've read numerous times in different articles, 
um, about the gut being the second brain. And I was just trying to see if there was any like um, connection to what you're talking about. Because if your gut isn't healthy and they're talking about it being um, the second brain and it has just as much, uh, what is it, nerves um, in it as, I might not be saying it right. I read this a long time ago. But when you, since we're talking about the gut, I'm trying to find out if there's any connection to the function or the purpose of the uh, healthy gut as far as it pertains to our lives and the gut being the second brain that's true and i've done videos on that how gut health is linked to depression anxiety um is linked to uh auto is definitely linked to autoimmune disease absolutely yeah because uh, again 70 percent of our immune system is in our gut and our colon uh, so that that's that's very true if we're not eating correctly and if we're not eating correctly and nourishing our body our immune system which is located in the gut then the whole body is going to malfunction especially mentally that's the first uh that's where we that's where we feel it first uh is in our brain and that's why we have so much mental illness so much anxiety so many suicides um, and I've been hearing about, I, I don't watch the news because I don't like keeping up with all of this negativity, but I've heard about all the shootings um, uh, that continue to perpetuate our society. But again, no one wants to talk about uh, the link to, uh, between gut health and, and brain health. And if your brain isn't working properly, that can lead to societal ills such as violence but no one wants to talk about that yeah. so we want to eat fiber rich foods foods rich in fiber that's your first source of prebiotic the first way that you build a healthy gut is to some of the signs of a, a healthy gut how can someone know that you know um they have a healthy gut is bowel movements of the other because i'm sorry let me just say why i'm asking this um i found out recently that a lot of people mm -hmm. are not having regular bowel movements and they actually believe that that is normal because i mean people are going moving their bowels twice a week two times per week and they actually believe like that's okay they're not going every day and that's that's their norm right um so i guess i'm the, when we're talking about healthy gut is that also connected to the amount of bowel movements that people are having and if someone is irregular is that a sign of unhealthiness absolutely that's dangerous um because that means that you're going to if you're constipated then the constipation, which means that you're backed up with fecal matter, is going to get released through another means. So it get released through the mouth, that's bad breath. It get released through the skin, that's your acne. Um, it gets released through the underarms, that's why we have to dump all these deodorants on ourselves. The, there has to be relief, we, we become a garbage disposal that's not releasing the garbage is very dangerous uh eating a fiberless diet less than three percent of americans eat 25 grams of fiber a day and that's that's the fiber is a medicine it's a high power vacuum that sweeps away toxins in our gut and that's the government standards my standards of excellence is that we should be consuming more than 50 grams of fiber in a day what, and what? if we What's some of the um what's some examples of good fiber we should be eating on a regular basis? G bombs. G bombs. Greens, beans, onions, mushrooms, berries, and seeds. The diet should be so heavily based in greens that your stool should be green. Mm, okay. Yeah, well large, lots of lots of um, dishes rich in green vegetables. That's the most nutrient dense. Uh, if there's over 700 different medicines in a piece of broccoli. One piece of broccoli has 700 different medicines. There's no way man will never, ever be able to give us something that can replicate 
a piece of broccoli. I mean, I don't care what they do to the soil. They can they can try to manipulate nature all they want to, uh, but a piece of broccoli has 700 natural medicines, and it is so powerful that even if you put it in a powder form, uh, you give it to autistic children, their symptoms start to improve. Uh, so, uh, for fame, that's a medicine in broccoli. Yeah, that's I mean, just yeah. yeah, yeah I, beans. I was always under the impression that broccoli was a hybrid vegetable. No. Yeah, some people that that's a belief system among a lot of health gurus that we shouldn't eat vegetables that were mixed, were created through breeding different plants. Uh, I don't agree with that, but I mean, if somebody. If somebody believes that, then I don't have a problem with that. Uh, you're going to have a hard time eating anything because mm. man has been man has been mixing and matching plants for thousands of years. So yeah, broccoli is, is two different types of cabbages that was uh, mixed mixed thousands and thousands of years. I'm, and I'm talking about going back to like ancient Rome. I mean, so okay. to, to try to go back, and that's what that's something Dr. Sebi was working on, where he was literally tracing every the origin of every single thing we eat, which is why the diet he recommended it was extremely restricted. And uh, most most people have a hard enough time eating the G bombs that I recommend. So when you start trying to uh, say, "Well, I'm only going to eat the foods that existed when we were first created uh, thousands of thousands, or if you even believe millions of years ago," all I have to say is, "Good luck to that." <laughs> I did it. I did it for. Um... I did it, my partner and I did it for a month, maybe over a month, the alkaline diet. And when I came out of it, even though I felt better, mm -hmm. and um, you talk about like inflammation, I know he had some in his knees, like you, you feel the difference. So when it was time for us, we were talking about going back. And that was the first thing I said. I appreciate it, but it's, it is extremely restrictive. And so I like pineapple juice. And I was like, if pineapple juice I mean, pure pineapple juice, juice from the pineapple. If it's not doing me any harm, I don't really understand why I have to restrict myself from it. So I was having a hard time because it is extremely restrictive, even though you definitely reap the benefits and you feel the benefits. But I also understand being a vegan myself that you can, I can clean up my vegan um, diet even more and not necessarily follow Dr. Sabi, but there's always room for improvement. Um, my question um, to you is, what have you noticed is one of the biggest barrier for us to take control of our health? Hmm. Good question. Uh, food addiction. That's, that is the barrier. It's we're food addicts. It's not the knowledge. When I speak Saturday here, again, for anybody watching in Orlando, Florida, I'm, I've arrived here safe and sound. And, I'll be speaking Saturday, uh, 12 p.m., 3 p.m., living my best life. Mm -hmm. uh, that we can find it on a, uh, on Eventbrite. And, and, uh, and it's the food addiction. That's what I'll be talking about is how, what are the 12 components of food addiction and how do we overcome them? It's not the knowledge because I, I have all the knowledge and I'm still – uh, not in tip top shape. Well, how is that possible when I know exactly what I'm supposed to do? I've helped coach over 200 clients and you can look at and, and I'm thankful. I'm thankful that I'm as good as I am because I, I shoot. I know some people talking about health and have the knowledge I have and they flat out fat. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. so how, how does that happen when you have somebody who has all this knowledge about what to eat, what not to eat? And they they not just not in top shape. They actually fat. Well, that's because of the that that's because of the food addiction. Mm. Yeah, the, the, the food addiction. So that's the barrier. If you don't uh, the the drug the, the foods is is drugs. I mean, it's like it's pretty much like a it's like legal terror. I mean, I I drive down here to to the holiday to the to the um to the place that I'm staying, at, and that's all you see. All it is, just junk food. You can't go nowhere without a bunch of junk food. That's what we do in this nation. We eat. I go through the airport, and all it is is junk food. You go to the gas station. You can't even buy dog. You can't even go to a, a doggone office max for Pete's sake. For crying out loud, I can't even buy paper 
without junk food there. They hear me at my place, you know. So that's what we do in the nation. We we drug food addicts, and that's the yeah. that's the barrier. I give people the nod. People want to make all these excuses about oh, well, it's this or this system or that system. Listen, I go and I be I have all these success stories from black folk. I try I go on and post videos. And people don't want to hear it. Most people have no interest in hearing this information. They, I have to post, I have to come up with negative topics just to get people to watch the video. Because mm -hmm. if I post a video mm -hmm. about, if I post a video saying, here's, here, here's how it is, sisters. If I post a video and I say, um, white person put this in black mm -hmm. person's food, Views. then it'll be it'll get a hundred thousand views, views. Yep. So but if yeah. if i make a video and say this brother took control over his own life and lost 200 pounds in 200 days the man lost 200 pounds in 200 days but if i post that video i'd be lucky if it gets 300 views that's crickets that's real yeah. that's the, that's the sensationalism of media Everything is sensationalized, and I've I've come to the realization that most of us don't want the solution. Well, that's and that's what he's talking about when he says like laziness, and we don't which is it. a part of the addiction. But my question is, if there's an addiction, how do we begin the steps? How, where do we start to begin to start to break that addiction? Because when I think addiction, I think like something that has a hole of you. So what, how do someone be, take the necessary, what are the necessary steps that someone would need to take to begin to break themselves or get free of that addiction? Well, that's the whole point of the tour. People, that's the focus of the lecture and the knowledge. It starts with knowledge. Okay. And, and again, it's about, um, it, that's, that's why I'm on the tour that I'm on and I'm trying to get back on uh, the East Coast. Uh, I'm in touch with a couple of uh, pastors from uh, from Baltimore. However, I don't just speak at churches, but for right now, is mostly, which is a good thing, uh, the black church has really stepped up to the plate and they're the ones hosting me in all of these different cities. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm trying to get back out there to you guys, uh, but it's, it's about the knowledge. When you come to my seminar, you wanna come with notebook and pen. It's very unfortunate whenever I see people and they sit in there and they, and, and I'm glad that I'm able to hold people's attention, but you should have a notebook and pen and you should be taking notes. Um, and so that's what it's about. A lot of lies have been empowered through my seminars this January. Then on my YouTube channel, I have a 28 part health seminar series. Uh, and I, I meticulously go over in detail each component of food addiction. I go over the G bombs. Also, I have a 28 part health seminar series on my YouTube channel, The Minister of Wellness. You have uh, the power of the G bomb, so you can learn what to eat and why the, that, that medicine is in food. Uh, then you have the 12 components of food addiction and the fundamentals of eating to live. But if you don't put health on the pedestal all the way up to almost the level of whatever belief system that you in, however, whatever your uh, religion is, religion, faith, spirituality, whatever name you want to give it, mm -hmm. <clears throat> whatever that is, if your health and taking care of your health and overcoming your addiction, if, if it isn't right up there, right up there with that, you're not going to make it because we're bombarded with this and you have to bombard yourself with knowledge about what they're putting in the food, mm -hmm. what are they putting in the vaccines, and that's knowledge that a lot of people are willing to take. I mean, I don't, I don't speak about half of the stuff that I know. I don't speak about ninety-five percent of the stuff that I really know because it's too scary for most people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know what they're doing to the food, what they're putting in the meat, how are they flavoring these processed foods, what are they putting in the vaccines? It's an abomination. Yeah, yeah. I always, I always tell a story. What hit me smack in the face of my, our, my realization about food and the addiction part, especially with sugar, is I had uh, Jackson. I had spent. Uh, I had to go to the emergency room 
a couple of years back, and I noticed that the uh, only thing they had in the emergency room for folks to eat on was a snack machine bar with nothing but <laughs> cakes and, and, and chips and candy bars in the emergency room. That's when it hit me, like, wow, we really got an issue here. But I want to talk on um, exercise. What, what kind of advice would you give to those who are, are very active um, in their lives that don't really have a lot of room as far as time in the day for a strict exercise regimen? What do you recommend for those types of people? Any kind of like tips or things that we can take advantage of, like we're, you know what I'm saying, in the midst of what we're already doing in our day-to-day -day lives, that we can get some exercise in as opposed to going to a gym? Mm -hmm. um, yes, I can, but what I want to say is I don't, I don't let people give me that I don't have time excuse because the reason why we don't have, we make, we make time for things that we have to do and what we have to have. If you don't if you don't have to work out, then you won't work out. So it's all about it's all about how much of a priority it is and we're gonna find time to do it. Uh wake up earlier and you'll you'll find time to do it. Don't watch no entertainment and you'll be surprised how much time you have when you Go night, go thirty days without watching nothing that has. If it doesn't have anything to do with helping you to accomplish the goals you have in life, eliminate it for thirty days and watch how much time you have. <laughs> social media That'll, elimination of social media alone will do that. Shut up, truth. <laughs> right. Yeah. 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 We scroll, start scrolling down timelines, looking at foolishness and. And we've been consumed already uh, with a whole bunch of stuff. I know for me, you know, I start, if I start clicking on the next big fight coming up and all of a sudden I spent one hour sitting here going over this, this the you know, the male version of a soap opera, which is fights. He said this, he talked this trash, he did this trash. So we waste a lot of time. And uh, so that's not an excuse. We need We need to go to bed at a decent time. And we need to get our behinds up early and get inside that gym. Or if you want to work out in your house, you have tapes that they've already made. They already have the system to take away the excuses. You can roll out of bed for Pete's sake and put in a DVD and you can work out hard for an hour. How hard is it to get out of bed, put in a DVD and work out for an hour right in your living room? Well, it's still hard because laziness is one of the components of food. It's still hard to do it. Even people that have tapes right there in their living room, all you got to do is literally open your eyes, roll out of bed, and put in a tape. And people can't even do that. <laughs> he said roll. <laughs> sit up. Not sit up. Right. I have, I have um, Minister, how important is, fa is fasting? to our health? Mm, good question. Very important. Uh, very important. The body, the body that that is the seventh component of food addiction, toxic hunger. Um, and toxic hunger means that the reason why we eat, we feel that we have to eat every few hours is because a body that is toxic is painful to detox because detox can only occur once the body has entered a state of fasting. Now, your body enters the state of fasting officially three hours after your last meal. Mm -hmm. So right when you eat a meal, you're in the anabolic phase, your body is breaking down the nutrients, the carbohydrates that it needs for energy. And then you enter what is called the catabolic phase when your body is living off of the stored uh, glucose, sugar in the liver called glycogen, that's called glycolysis. It's during glycolysis that your body can heal. Your immune system can start working to heal. But when you have a lot of toxins, pollutants, and waste in your cells, that healing process creates withdrawal pain that we Americans, we call hunger. Our stomach growls, that's the waste mobilizing in the gut. 
we call stomach growling hunger. We get fatigued. We get headaches. We get lightheaded. We start acting like that fool on the Snickers commercial. And we think that that's hunger. You know, like in the Snickers commercial where he just starts, he hallucinates and goes bipolar and schizophrenic and gets bad and angry and, and turns into an old, you know, a cranky old woman. And then you say, hey, man, you're hungry. And you give him a Snicker and then he turned back into a calm young man. That's foolishness. That's not hunger. That's toxic hunger. And that, those symptoms start to come when uh, you enter a state of fasting. So people are too uncomfortable to fast. But when we eat to live and we detox truly, which can only be during a state of fasting, what you'll find is that your perception of hunger will change from a stomach and head sensation to a mouth and throat sensation. And then you're able to go long hours uh, without eating. And that's healthy. The longer you can go in between meals, which is called intermittent fasting, the healthier you'll be. The, the, the least the, we have to eat as little as possible to be healthy. But the only way you can comfortably eat as little as possible is the food has to be packed with micronutrients, medicine, because medicine foods. You will have eaten only a thousand calories and you'll feel like you've eaten 10,000 because the medicines and the fiber, it makes up for the lack of calories. Whereas when we're eating the dope foods, it's the opposite effect. You can eat 20,000 calories of fried rice and you in two hours later, you back at the next buffet for round two. Mm. You know, I was just I was just listening to a lady today um, doing some um, um, information uh, uh, about food, and she had mentioned it really doesn't matter when you eat, when you break your fast, when your breakfast is, as opposed to what you eat. She's like, some people prefer to eat first thing in the morning, others prefer to eat when they're hungry, maybe, you know, later around later. Um, and she says none of that really matters. It just really, when you break your fast, what the main thing is mm -hmm. what you're breaking it with. The time factor is not the biggest issue. What would you say to that? I completely agree. Mm -hmm. That was very, very intelligent what she said. That's true. Mm -hmm. yeah, I don't eat, when I, I eat one meal a day, so I eat between the hours of 11. I usually don't eat until after 11 a.m. and that's breakfast. So. Uh, technically, per the definition of breaking a fast, um, if you only eat one meal a day, then you only eat breakfast. Mm. You know, all this lunch, dinner, snacks, and snacks in between the snacks and all of this stuff. And, I mean, that, you know, that, that's just, again, you know, the, the dope foods are designed to keep you coming back for more. Mm. And this is an acceptable part of our culture. I was just listening, you know, I was talking about wasting time and how easy it is to waste time. And that's why we make lame excuses about not having time to exercise when we find time for what we we feel like we have to do. Well, uh, when I was on the uh, getting off the airplane, I, I started watching a bunch of I started wasting time watching a bunch of comedy clips from that real uh, the old beast brother, uh, Bruce Bruce. Mm -hmm. And. It was, I mean, he's hilarious, but at the same time, it was sad mm -hmm. listening to him make a joke out of him, out of him being an obese glutton. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's sad. You know, it's like, uh, and then of course, you know, I, I, it's like everything he was saying, I talk about in my food addiction still. Like he was cracking jokes about how he hates skinny people. Well, he, if I had a pill that could take away his addiction and make him skinny, he would do it in a heartbeat. Mm -hmm. Uh, he was just, you know, talking about his love for food and, you know, I burn this place down if we don't have pop, if they run out of Popeye's chicken and I can eat 50 wings. And, like most of his jokes was centered around uh, how much of an obese glutton he is. And that's sad. And you have thousands of people uh, just laughing and laughing and laughing. And uh, that that's our culture. And he knows it. Wow, that's interesting. Um, if you're just tuning in, family, you are listening to the Minister of Wellness, Nathaniel Jordan. He's talking to us about optimum, optimum health. 
He's currently in Florida. So if you guys are in that area and want to see him live, where, where are you going to be um, um, there, Nathaniel? Where? Yeah. yeah, and I'm trying to uh, let me, yeah, because it's, it's living. I know the, the link to the link to look it up is uh, living, living my best. Uh, living my best life, living my best life, health and wellness. And let me get that uh, the exact address. I'm in Orlando. It's in Orlando, Florida. Living my best life. Of course, my Facebook page is the Minister of Wellness. So it's, it'll be it'll be held at uh, New Life Church of God in Christ. That's uh, 3311 North Powers Drive in Orlando, Florida. That's New Life. Church of God in Christ is a huge church right in the heart of Orlando, 3311 North uh, Powers Drive. I was uh, booked to speak uh, by uh, Pastor and Sister uh, Rose, uh, Pastor Ricky and his uh, wife, Sister Rose. They found out about me, got motivated, um, and, and they are teaming up. They've been promoting this. I'll actually be on a very popular gospel station tomorrow morning for helping uh, to get a final push. Healthy food will be served. And I just encourage anybody who wants to add me uh, to their city to get in touch with me. I work with all budget levels uh, because the most important thing for me is uh, to get this to get this information out. I should be back in, uh, what's that, Woodbridge, Virginia, March the 1st. Oh, okay. uh, but I but however, that's through, again, that's through a church, you know, so I understand there's a lot of people that are watching and you might not go to church on Sundays. Well, like I said, I speak uh, at colleges, universities, and there's other venues I can speak at. But again, at this time, 99% uh, of the organizations that are bringing me in uh, is, the, uh, is the black church, which again, I'm excited about because uh, my father was a pastor, and I watched him eat ate himself to death. So uh, as the minister of wellness, make no mistake about it, I am absolutely excited uh, that, the, uh, that the church in particular, the black church, is, is, has seen to reach um, a state of such emergency when it comes to the illness and obesity at the church that uh, I am getting a lot of response and lives are being impacted. Uh, for the better, but you know, again, uh, for those who uh, don't attend uh, church and still want to hear me speak, uh, that's when we need all other organizations to uh, to step up uh, to the plate. Absolutely, I agree, and because that's where a lot of us are. A lot of us are in the churches, and that's where the services are needed as well. So, and the March first, I wrote that down because I'm hoping we might be able to. Um, get you in here around that same time frame since you're going to be in our area, in the DMV area. Mm -hmm. So I'll be calling you later uh, about that as well. We don't have a lot of time left, family. If you're joining us, we are talking to the Minister of Wellness about Optimum Health. Um, tune into the Empower Hour. Um, as you can see, we ta tackle impactful topics of discussion that affect our everyday lives. Um, I just want you to talk a little bit more, um, the minister, about what you were saying early on in the program about um, blaming others for our own personal shortcomings. And you said you, you refuse to allow us to accept the fact that racism, 